A beloved tradition in Brooklyn dating back to 1903 returned today. More than 100 men lifted the Giglio through the streets of Williamsburg as part of a huge Catholic festival put on by Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church. It honors Italian St. Paulinus of Nola, who offered his life to save others. The event was put on hold in 2020 because of the pandemic, but as you can see, it returned strong this year. Today's prayer was dedicated to all the lives lost to COVID-19. The feast runs through July 18th. It was Brooklyn. It was the 1960s. Robert and Diana were two Italian-American teenagers living on the same street they were both born on, just a few doors away from each other. And they fell in love. They were married in the same Catholic church that they had been raised in. They had children together and raised them on that same street and in that same neighborhood Catholic church. And then, they got baptized. This is the story of Petros, Markella, and Pavlos, and their journey to the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Well, I was raised a Roman Catholic. Uh, so was my wife, uh, Markella. And uh, so were my two children, my oldest one, Eric, and the youngest one, Keith. Those were their uh, baptismal names on their Roman Catholic Church. Um, we attended church regularly. I mean, we weren't, you know, attending every, uh, every Sunday, but, you know, we, we practiced. And then Pavlos, Keith, my youngest son, you know, he was born special needs. And, you know, we never gave up much thought. You know, he went to church with us. And then, oh, it must have been around 1992, 93. Around that time, he wanted to receive communion. Now, in the Roman Catholic Church, you just can't receive communion yet. If you don't go to a, a, a parochial school, you have to go to religious instructions. But he was not going to be able to do the religious instruction. So we went to the church and explained that. And they had said they would teach him on Saturday. I said, it's just a matter of him learning some prayers, understanding, you know, the history of the church, you know, as best, best he could. And Pavlos was developmentally delayed. You know, he was borderline um, in terms of in intelligence. And as every time the Saturday came, for him to go for instructions, they canceled. And then eventually one day the priest had told me, he goes, well, you know, not to worry about it. He's an angel, he doesn't have to receive. Well. My wife and I could have easily just have him receive communion. No one would ever known the difference, whether he uh, was given permission to receive the sacrament. But that didn't sit well with us. And then eventually we just drifted away from the church because of that and weren't doing anything. But Markella, my wife, she had a desire to go you know, to church. And uh, she was starting to think about going to the Protestant religion. But what happened was in 94, Markella fell sick with uh, breast cancer. And um, we just put everything on hold because we had to take care of, you know, her, her medical situation. What happened then was we were making the decision after the treatments whether to move to New Jersey or to stay here and renovate the house. My wife decided she wanted to renovate the house. And subsequently, we knew this a uh, friend of ours, George, who was Greek. And he came actually during the time of 1996, Pascha, to start doing the house. And at that time, he was speaking to Mark Heller about 
you know, becoming orthodox and the religion, because he knew this, she had explained the situation to him. And at that point, you know, we had, <clears throat> I, I remember engaging in conversations with him and saying, look, you know, one church is no better than the other. Like at the end of the day, when he finished a job, he would sit down, we'd have coffee, and he would explain, I just turned him off and said, hey, look, <laughs> you're no better than anybody else. You know, you're all in the same boat. I don't want to hear it. You know, and I just wouldn't discuss it. So George never did anything for me. He did it for Markella. Markella was the one with the drive to go. I, like I said before, had no intentions of carrying this out in terms of after baptism. I, you know what, here's the keys, you go Sunday. I'm staying home watching, you know, sports. Subsequent to that, Markella was like, you know, she really wanted to do something. She wasn't happy with her religious uh, aspects of her life. And then one night we were just, and we went to bed and I just looked at her and I said, look, if you want to do it, let's do it. And that's how we came to the church. But I was not one into doing it. I was doing it so Pavlos could receive the sacrament and to make Markella happy. As far as I was concerned, I had no intentions of going to church after everything was done. I was just, you know, do what you gotta do. I'm staying home, watching Sunday afternoon football. Well, St. Markella, because uh, George went to St. Markella's, that was his church. So that's how we ended up going there. And my first, like I said, exposure was during Holy Week. And it was like, whoa, you know, what is this? I mean, the services, you know, weren't like, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, we're over, you know, go home. You know, the services were very religious services. coming home at night saying to, you know, Mark Keller, look, you know, I got to go to work the next day. I can't deal with this. But in any case, I, I weathered through it. Like I said, I was doing this for them, not for me. I had no intentions of really fulfilling anything. And I basically, you know, George, I think there was a bit of a communication in trying to explain what the process was. And I figured, hey, you know, they just baptized us, whatever they have to do, we're done, we're over with, I'm home. And it was the summer of 96 that, uh, at that time, Father Pavlos, Bishop Pavlos, today, um, said to you, and you were a monk at the time, because my friend George wanted us to get baptized before he went back to Greece. And Father Pavlos, in all his wisdom, basically said, find out what they know. Now, during that time, George was giving me books to read. I was just putting them in the corner. I said, I've got time to read this. Football's on, you know, that type of thing. And um, that's when we started going to instructions with you. And that kind of opened up a whole different view of what true Christianity was about. And uh, I became very interested and eventually began to see the difference between the Latin church and the uh, Orthodox church and went ahead. And I did the baptism with my heart, not just, yeah, I'm doing this. Then when my friend George came back the following year, it was around, I think, February of 97, is when uh, we got baptized as a family. And I've been to the church, you know, uh, with the church ever since. Now, of course, of COVID, but I watch it religiously on Sundays. I put the channel on. I just remember I was like flying high. And I don't mean high like, you know, people would think. I remember going to work. Uh, it was just like a feeling of euphoria. That's the way I felt. I mean, I was like, wow, you know. It was like a whole, a whole different world opened up to me. And that's, that's, I think, was the main thing I felt at the time, was this satisfied feeling. I felt at peace with myself.
Well, at the time, Diana, my wife, uh, actually she was, uh, I was picking the name John. Um, Keith, I think we were picking the name Joseph for him. And Markella, my wife Diana, uh, she, I think, was taking uh, the name of Mary. But Bishop Pavlos, this was like, this is a whole family getting baptized. And he, he assigned the names to us. And he gave us the name of me, uh, Peter. Actually, you know, after the saints, Paul, the two major apostles of Christianity. And Diane was named after the church, Markella. And that's how we got the names. Did your life change much after? Oh, yeah, it became, you know, it was like, I think a year later, I became an Epithropo. And I had been doing that ever since until COVID. And yeah, it was like I had a whole new family at church. You know, it was a whole, I mean, the feast days, the holidays, especially during Pascha. It was a, a whole different life, a whole new life. Um, they didn't understand it at all. My, uh, one, but my youngest brother, not the youngest, the next to youngest. Um, he thought I was becoming Jewish when I told him I'm becoming Orthodox. I said, no, it's not that. Um, they didn't understand why we were doing this. And we, much as we tried to explain it to them, they, and they couldn't understand the fasting part either. Because, I mean, there were like, Fourth of July was during a fasting period, and we wouldn't have, you know, burgers or franks or chicken or anything like that, any sort of meats. So they couldn't understand, you know, like, what kind of weird religion is that? I said, no, it's fasting, you know. After a while, it just didn't make sense to explain it because they just weren't going to get it. I've been in the Latin church many times after that. Um, and I never felt spiritual. And neither did Mark Keller, for that matter. We never felt spiritual. I mean, you know, we had to attend affairs, funerals, um, you know, marriages. And we, you know, we stayed in the background. But never once did I ever feel like, oh, wow, I miss this. No, it wasn't the same feeling I get when I go to St. Mark Keller's. I mean, there you feel the spiritualism. And you see it among the people as well. really, you know, I think it brought us together as a family, and um, it brought, like I said, a whole new life. He felt very good. He was happy. He was happy he was receiving communion, you know, because this is what he wanted. And Markella, I know, was flying, too. I mean, she was so happy that, you know, she, Markella was always always, uh, well, I hate using the word religious, but she was always spiritual, you know, and even as uh, growing up, you know, um, she always have had a love for the, uh, the Blessed Mother, the Theotokos. And she, I know, was so happy when she came to the church. She was, she, we both come in, you know, if we missed liturgy on a Sunday, it was like, wow, you know? And if we missed twice because of things coming up, it was, uh -uh, we're not missing a third time. You know, it was only, you know, because of COVID, things have changed. Um, Do you want to talk about why she's not here? Yeah, no, that, that's... Mark Keller, as I said, in 94, when she uh, had breast, breast cancer. And what happened then was she went for treatment and 
In 95, a year, it was over, over a year, she went into remission. Uh, I will always say this, no one beats cancer. It just, you know, goes away for a while and then, you know, it comes back. In 2016, the cancer came back and she didn't survive that. She died on an Orthodox feast day, January 19th, 2017. The, the, the epiphany, that's, she died that afternoon. And I remember my friend George, who was in at the time because they knew she was ill and she wasn't gonna make it. They came in from Greece. And I remember him coming up the stairs and he was all excited because, you know, this was an important feast day. And I remember looking at him and going, shh. I said, she's taking her last breaths. When he came in, she was. And it was about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon when she passed. And the funny thing was, she, it, it was a cross we had. It was a liturgy cross. Apparently, it was... It was gold-plated and apparently was stolen. So when thinking it was gold, and they threw it in the garbage. My brother-in-law, her brother Bobby, uh, who recently passed away, uh, he had found the cross in the garbage. He didn't know, it was just a cross to him. So he brought it to the Roman Catholic Church and they had said to him, that's not our cross. Now, this is 20 years before we became Orthodox. He held on to that cross for 20 years. And when we were baptized, he gave that cross to us as a gift. And who can have something better than that? And subsequently, when she passed, I put that in the, in the I hate using that word, coffin. I put that with her. It's with her now? Oh, yeah. And I see her every Saturday. I go have coffee with her in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, we met at a party, you know. Now, you have to remember back then when we were growing up, Italian families were extremely strict. Now, I was 17, she was 14. Now, today, you know, it's a whole different ball game. But back then, it was like, and the only, re I met her at the party and we started to date. But after a while, she said, you know, I can't keep sneaking out. <laughs> and, yeah, okay, and... So she told her mother, you know, and asked if it was okay. The only reason I was allowed to date her because her mother knew my grandmother who used to wheel me in the carriage because we lived six houses away from each other, who used to wheel me in the carriage and she would come out and see her and they would talk, you know, um, being from the, you know, the old country, Italy. And, you know, and that was the only reason because she knew me as a baby that I was allowed to date her. And then we got married. Uh, God, she was 18, I was 21. She told me once that she almost became a convert. Yeah, I, I think, Joy, remember I had spoke to you, she had a, 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 an affinity for Blessed Mother. And she really, really at one point contemplated, but this is before meeting me when she was younger, she really contemplated becoming a nun. She really was, she really was a spiritual person. You know, and, um, and I remember asking her, you know, if I ever passed away, what would you do? Would you get married? And she said, well, what would you do? I said, well, i tell you one thing. I'm not getting married again. I don't want to know anybody. I said, you know, basically, you're the only, we were married a number of years. I said, you know, you're the only one in my heart. And I said, what about you? She goes, I'd become a nun. She said, I would become a nun. And, uh, you know, it was funny that, you know, she said that, and then you just mentioned it. And, uh, you know, it's four years now that she passed. And true to my word, there's no one else in my life except for two little girls, one's 10 and the other one's five. Grandmothers. My granddaughters. Eric's children. Right, and my son, Eric, yeah, my oldest son, Eric's children. Even to this day, you know, uh, my, my spiritual soul, being, has got me through a lot, you know. Um, 
and and you know, like any other time, you know, you do get kind of like, you know, why me? Why did you do this? You know, um, but you know, it's life. That's the way, you know, it is life. You know, people always expect this great miracle that God, God does things, in my opinion, on an individual basis. He touches each of our souls if you want it to be touched. You know, the odd thing too, which I didn't mention before is, if Markella didn't get sick in 1994, we were about close to selling our house and moving to Jersey. I would have never became Orthodox. When she got sick, that's what changed everything because she had to stay here because all her doctors were in Manhattan. And, and we stayed and then she made the decision she didn't want to move after, you know, to treatments, she wanted to renovate the house. Had it wasn't for that, I would have been in Jersey. God knows doing what. <laughs> in a way, her, her illness brought us to the church too because if, it was those series of events that changed everything. You know, I've always said that. I said, you know, believe it or not, when she, you know, because when she got sick the second time, I, I, you know, she just remembers saying it's just not fair. And I remember saying to her, you know, I agree, it's not fair, but it is what it is, you know. And, you know, God works in strange ways, you know. And once again, if you looked at it, she, um, Got sick the first time in 94, I wouldn't have been orthodox. I would have been really a, a non-practicing Catholic. It's where I would have been. When did you and Markella move into this house? We, her, actually Markella was born in this house. Um, then in 1992, we bought the house from her mother. And then we took care of the mother until she passed. And, um, so that's basically it. Mark Keller was born here, and we owned it from 1992 until she passed 2017. And I live six houses away from here. And this is where Mark Keller passed away? Yes, Mark Keller passed away. Um, in fact, if you look up there, that front room, that is the room she passed. So we, we were here a pretty long time. Now we're going to go show you the house that I was born in. And how close Markella was born here, right? And we're a few more houses down. And this is the house that I was born in, right here. And this, what's the name of this neighborhood? Uh, this is considered Bay Ridge, but it has a Borough Park zip code. Yes, this was predominantly Italian. Yeah, it was an Italian neighborhood. Um, bordered by a Jewish neighborhood, and quite frankly, we got along very well. And now it's just on the other side of the street here. And this, this initially was the Angel Guardian home, and it um, was a convent as well as a home for unwed mothers back in the 60s. Then it still stayed as a convent, but then uh, it was no longer a home for unwed mothers and it became uh, an extension of the Department of Social Services. And then subsequently the nuns sold it, but this, this area of buildings are being kept because uh, of historic reasons. And as you can see, they converted the rest into condos. Do you miss this neighborhood at all? No. The old days? The old days, yes. Not the way it is today, but yes, the old days, yeah. It was, um, it was a nice neighborhood. It really was, it was a great place to grow up. But today it's entirely different. Uh, the culture has changed, everything has changed, so. Church? Regina Pachus. Uh, Markella went to the parochial school here. Um, this was our parish church, and we were married here. This is the church you grew up in? Yeah. This is where we grew up. And what is, what is, uh, when you go inside, what is 
inside. Is there something about the uh, legend of that? Well, supposedly there is a, um, a painting, I guess you want to call a mural, uh, on the ceiling, and there's a gentleman there, and apparently his, his name is uh, Joe Pfacci, a, a well-known person from the 60s. What's this picture doing in the... Uh, he was uh, a supporter of the church. He supported the church. And that's why his... Yeah. Himself put up there? Yeah, I guess, yeah. That's the legend? That's the legend. Let's go inside. Where, where did you grow up? I grew up in... I was born and raised in Brooklyn at Victory Memorial Hospital, 1983. But it just brings back memories because I grew up here. And when I think about it, it's happy times for me. You remember this street right here we're standing on now? Yes, I remember 13th Avenue, all the stores that were here, the pizzeria. But since I'm living in Staten Island, it's a different life for me. I made a lot of new friends there. I like it. I go bowling now in Staten Island. I'd still pray. I, I think about you. Do you remember when you got baptized? 1997. Do you remember? Yes, I remember that day. And, you, and how do you like? Uh, you no, know, you grew up in. This was an Italian neighborhood. You moved. To, you, you became I, a Greek Orthodox. How did, how did you? How do you like getting along with Greeks? I got along with everybody just well. I was very happy going to the church. Una fazza, una razza, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I do remember always seeing my godfathers when I was living in Brooklyn. <laughs> Who are your godfathers? Who are George they? George and Pete. George and Pete, in, where are they now? In Greece. Okay. And this is your dad over here? This is my dad. You get close. How do you feel about being an Orthodox Christian? I feel very good about being an Orthodox Christian. It makes me feel good. And do you remember uh, the first time you, you went to St. Marcella's? And I was 12 years old, back in 1995. Very good. It was a okay. long time ago, but it brings back memories. But over the years, I still have a lot of memories of when my mom and dad used to go to Pat Mark's Scatoros, and I would always go to church on Sundays and see everyone and be with George and Pete. And I would sit next to them and I would uh, do my cross there. I also... Do How do you, do you remember, do you remember your, of course you remember your mom. Do you remember when your mom wanted to become Orthodox? And 19... 95, I you think. Want, you want pasta? Yes. Tomato sauce? Yes. 1995 or 96. Do you miss her? I miss my mom, but I still have the memories of her, which isn't bad. I still have a picture. I have pictures of her in the 1980s and the 90s. Yeah. What was your um, fondest memory of St. Marcella so far? When we got baptized, and I used to stay there with Zoe and see everyone. It was such a happy time for me. Pablo, when you became an Orthodox Christian, is that when you started fasting, or did you fast before? Yeah. But how do you like fasting? What's it like? Fasting for me is good. It's okay for me. I don't get too aggravated about it. I understand what it's like not to eat <coughs> meat. 
And uh, when you fast, you do it for your own self and for your own good. But there's a reason why people say things like, oh, uh, this one got me mad because he interrupted my conversation. Or I didn't like it that the other stranger had to kiss my mom. So you see, human beings do get aggravated, but there's also a point where you start to love them again. I still love my grandparents. Even though my grandma hit me with the iron spoon, she still loved me because she was my best friend. It, it makes me laugh sometimes, right there? Mm -hmm. How does your faith, uh, being Greek Orthodox, how does that change your life? How has it made you deal with life? Has it helped you? It really helped me a lot. And I understand what it's like. You know, I, I still think that the love for my mom is still there and for my family members. We're gonna, we all miss her. But here we have our faith and we're gonna see her again, we know. Yes, I understand. You, like that song says, I, I, I gotta be good so I can see her again. It's a song, uh, what's that song? Um, what, uh, uh, where, oh, where can my baby be? Last Kiss by Frank J. Wilson. Say it, go ahead. Say the lyrics. Oh, oh where, oh, where, where can oh, my baby be? The, the Lord took her away from me. She's gone to heaven, so I got to be good. So I can see my baby when I leave this world. Well, your mom. That's your mom. That's the one that you got to be good so you can see her when you leave this world. I, I love the old. <laughs> Thanks, Pablo. Thanks for that.